Hi, my name is Ella Bolimowska. I am Data Protection Program Manager and I am responsible for personal data protection and tech sub compliance with the GDPR. Today, I'd like to present you three top important things to know about the GDPR and personal data protection. First of them is personal data itself. Talking and working with data is crucial to know what is and what isn't personal data. According to the definition offered by the GDPR, personal data means any information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person called data subject. Also, different pieces of information which collected together can lead to the identification of a particular person constitute personal data. On this slide, we see examples of personal data according to the GDPR. My name and surname, as well as my image, is personal data. Other personal data include a home address, an email address, an identification card number, location data of electronic devices like mobile phone, connection data, application access data, user and cookie ID, and passwords. There are certain types of data that the GDPR considers to be sensitive personal data and therefore classifies them under the special category of personal data. The processing of the above mentioned types of data is prohibited by the GDPR. Of course, there are certain exemptions to the rule. The most important from them is that the processing of sensitive personal data is possible if the data subject has given explicit consent to the processing of those data. On this slide, we see examples of sensitive personal data according to the GDPR. Examples of them include data related to racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious or philosophical beliefs, trade union memberships, genetic, biometric, health data. You might get the impression that pretty much everything amounts to personal data, and you wouldn't be that far from the truth. Academics have speculated that if the trend continues, in the future every piece of information will be considered personal data. But under the GDPR, there are at least three significant categories of information that are not considered personal data. They are data related to deceased natural person, data related to legal person, and anonymized data. Data protection rules apply whenever you are processing personal data. What is considered as data processing? So it's each action you are doing on personal data, including the collection, recording, organization, structuring, storage, adaptation, use, disclosure, or destruction of personal data. Also, access to personal data is treated as data processing. Second crucial point from GDPR perspective is user consent. When consent is the legal basis for lawful processing, Data subjects need to be clearly informed about their rights to withdraw consent and need to be able to do so easily if desired. Consent requires action. It needs to be given by a statement or by affirmative action and must be demonstrated by the controller. Let's talk more about consent requirements about the GDPR. GDPR sums up the essential conditions regarding consent. In a nutshell, consent needs to be freely given, it needs to be specific, per purpose, and to be informed. Making consent a condition for receiving a service is also not allowed. We should always use clear and plain language. Why do we need to comply with these rules? The GDPR is a legal framework that sets guidelines for the collection, handling, and transfer of personal data from individuals who live in the European Union or European economic area. The GDPR applies to the data itself, not to the location of the data. In other words, any party handling the data of European Union residents, regardless of location, is a subject to the GDPR. When European Union data is transferred outside the European Union, a set of accompanying documents are required under the GDPR, and one of the most important is data processing agreement. If you are still confused or have questions or any issues related, you can also have a look at full text of the GDPR or you can contact our team at info at ngosource.org. Thank you for listening.